Welcome, everyone, to probably the most important live show that I have ever done. That is right. You have tuned in to Jacob's Ladder, and I am here to say this eclipse is freaky. There are so many things coming together at once that it's almost undeniable that we are being told and shown something. The question is, what exactly is it? This is something that I've been talking about for many, many years. This, these two eclipses, it has been like a defining moment on this channel. If you've been here for a long time, woo hoo hoo, this is going to be like a blockbuster event for you. And I'm glad that you're here. Do me a favor, say hi in the live chat and buckle up big time. Because it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Let's start off with these eclipses that you've probably seen all over the uh, Twitterverse, Xverse, Facebook, or wherever everybody's talking about it. Back many moons ago, I talked about these eclipses and I talked about this seven years the seven years, although there's not exactly seven years between these two eclipses. It's in fact six years, six months, six weeks, and six days, bell to bell, eclipse to eclipse. Smack dab in the middle of these eclipses is a date that is incredibly significant, December 14th. The things that you're about to hear, they could be nothing at all. But I think that this is probably one of those shows that, especially if you've been watching for a long time, it is going to make you live a better life from this moment on. I, I come on here all the time and I try to share and I try to encourage people to be better. This is the Jonah moment. This is where Jonah comes and he comes a second time and he says, you better do this. He didn't want to tell everybody that he had something to say. He had a lot of stuff going on in his life. He went the other way, in fact. But God found a way to get him there. Come hell or high water in the belly of a great fish. There's so much symbolism and metaphor and things coming together in the heavens, in the earth, in the sea. It's all just... It's... Unheard of. I put a little, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to try to take this piece by piece because this is a, a really big show. And I, I really do hope that you don't get lost in the live chat, but you just kind of focus. I put out this little, uh, this little, we'll say a little commercial. I want to make sure that it is muted so that nobody can hear it. Um, because I used a band called Tool. And what I did was I basically was just trying to get everybody excited about the uh, unprecedented these unprecedented events that just happened for the first time ever, they, um, they're all coming together. That's the devil comet right there. It's going to be passing by. Four planets are aligning. And as I said earlier, these, these two eclipses, it's just something that really is, I don't know, like a warning, like a, a warning trying to get people to just wake up. Two broods of cicadas are emerging for the first time since, well, like 1746 to 1803. It, very strange. It all came together after a seven-year war. And here we have two broods of cicadas that are, well, they're emerging. And guess where they're emerging from? The very same place that this eclipse is. The very same place. Where these two eclipses cross-sect. It's a place called Little Egypt. If you're not aware, it's a, a literal place called Carbondale. Let me show this to you so you can just get an idea. Carbon, especially when you're talking about, you know, burnt wood, <laughs> ash, smoke, Six neutrons, six protons, six electrons. That's 666. Six, six. The crux of these eclipses, the cross 
of these eclipses, the cross of these eclipses. It's an X. That's what the cross is. It's the Tav. It is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the 22. That's why I placed it on the thumbnail, smack dab in the middle of that tree. Two sets of cicadas will be emerging. You have one group that is pretty much all over the place, a much larger group. Then you have another small group that will, will appear just in that area where the cross of the eclipses take place. At the same time, you have the Devil Comet that is flying overhead. The Devil Comet, which used to be called the Millennial Falcon Comet. But before I get into that, this is definitely the most important show I feel like I've ever done. I feel like this, I feel like this is the, um, this is like the moment. This is it. This is the Jonah moment. And it's like, where do we go from here? Because we don't have a lot of time until Passover, which is happening after this eclipse. And if you know the story of Passover, there's the blood that was put over the door. The angel of death comes for the wicked, for the firstborn of all of Egypt. Firstborn of the beast, firstborn of the... This is metaphor. Egypt is a man's confusion. It's his bondage. It's the system. Israel, smack dab in the middle. All of these plagues. I just heard Donald Trump screaming, turn the lights off, turn the lights off, turn the lights off, turn the lights off. Everybody's thinking this eclipse is going to bring some kind of terrible darkness. Some three days of darkness, as they say. One of the plagues. But what people forget is that the lights in Israel's house, and by Israel, I don't mean a literal land. I want to be very clear with you. Israel is not a literal place. That is not the holy land. Israel, which means those who overcome with God and man, prince of God, those who have been transformed, well, they're, they've, they're scattered all over the earth. They've been lost. But man will take it, and man will make it vile, and man will do something to try to trick everyone. So while Trump is screaming, turn the lights off, which I don't think he means there's going to be a blackout, I say it's time for us to shine our lights brighter than ever before. Let me read this to you. Revelation 11, 7, 11. And when the witnesses, by the way, the witnesses, but... <clears throat> The witnesses of God are just people that just, you know, they see the way things are going. Just a witness. It's like you see a car accident. You tell people, this is what happened. I'm a speculator, so what I do is I've been looking at the world through the lens of faith and allegory and metaphor, hoping that God would reveal something to me, and I've been sharing. And over the years, I believe that the track record stands. And if you're new, you're going to see how it stands and how incredibly just encouraging this is because the time that we're entering into a lot of people are very scared about a lot of people are very, but when the lights go out israel has their lights the israelites it's all of you it's me thank you very much for those in the super chat too by the way i may not be shouting out as much but i will by the end of the show i appreciate all the support it's a big thing so when the witnesses finish their testimony they're like we've laid it down Okay, that's when the beast ascends out of the bottomless pit. And he makes war against them. And he shall overcome them and kill them. But this is not what you think. This has been done within, spiritually speaking. And their dead bodies shall lay in the street of the great city. By the way, which is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Wait a minute, I thought Christ was crucified at a place called Golgotha, which in the Hebrew tongue means the place of the skull. I thought the way, the truth, and the life, the way to truly live your life was put to death at the place of the skull. I thought it was put to death, but I hear it saying Sodom and Egypt. But where is Sodom and Egypt? We got two eclipses that are cross-acting there. 
And you're going to find that Egypt is a man's confusion. You're going to find that God is going to be releasing us from the lies that we've believed. So the people of all kindreds and tongues and nations, they'll see these witnesses, their dead bodies, and uh, for a day and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in a grave. And they that dwell upon the earth shall re rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets, it's not about literal two, two prophets, by the way, just so you know. It's about a changed life, a natural to a spiritual life. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God enters into them and they stand up on their feet. And they say, do you see what we've been talking about all the time? Are you ready to see how God laid it out? Are you ready? Because that's what's coming. Especially in this show. But in Carbondale, this is where these eclipses cross. But that's not all. Because also in Revelation, where we have this happening with the, uh, the witnesses, we also have the devil that comes down onto the earth. And uh, it's not such a pretty sight. It kind of like warns all the people that you're going to be facing some hard times. In fact, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, which you probably know by now has uh, more to do with you know, people that are stuck in their carnal thoughts and their lies because the sea we know is man's ignorance. The devil comes down onto you having great wrath because he knows that what? He has a short time. So don't you think that it's interesting that at the same time we have these eclipses crossing in Egypt, which is where the witnesses stand and where the witnesses stand again and say, let me show you, I was dead before. No one heard me before, but now the witnesses of God are going to be heard. The lights of the world are going to shine like never before. This is the moment. There are two sets of cicadas that are emerging from the ground. Two sets, 13, 17. We've talked about 13 and 17. Remember the Super Bowl? It was all about 13 and 17. It was all about it. And I shared how the death card was 13, the resurrection card was 17, the renewal card, the death and the life, the two sets of cicadas coming together. All of these things are going to tie together into a place called Nineveh. Now, I know you probably, you've probably heard already that this eclipse goes through some interesting places. When it first came in, it, you know, I discussed it, many people discussed it. It hit Salem. Now, what's interesting is that Salem, ironically enough, it's in my novel. Salem. I named it Salem because I wanted it to be symbolic of, you know, the place of, we'll say, witchcraft, but also the place of Salam, which is Jerusalem. Peace. So I had double meaning. Two sets of cicadas. Double meaning. Salem in my novel. Also, Bethel in my novel. These are very sig significant stories that we learn about in Scripture. So, the fact that it hits Salem coming in all the, this way, strange. The fact that it's entering in this time at Eagle's Past, even stranger. The fact that we have this devil comet. And you know that I've been talking a lot about this thousand years of darkness that so many people have talked about. This exploding devil comet could photobomb, that means you'll, you'll be able to see it, perhaps, on April 8th during a total solar eclipse. And it may even be visible with the naked eye. This is Comet 12P. It used to be known as the Millennial Falcon. Millennium Falcon, excuse me. Because it looks a lot like the Millennial Falcon. Strange, because a thousand years is that time that the devil is released 
We spoke about this a little while ago. Remember the Japanese killing stone that opened up? The nine-tailed fox after being trapped for a thousand years? We have the thousand-year rule of Christ on the show. There's no literal time frame. The devil has a short time, but a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. I surmised that there would be two groups of people that would be going off into two separate worlds in, in a roundabout way. A time of correction to be perfected, because that's what it is. A separation of the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats. It comes at the same time. There are a lot more goats than sheep. There are a lot more tares than wheat. There are a lot more of one cicada than another cicada. All emerging, same time. Devil comets flying above. It's strange. Elon put out this weird tweet. You know that we've been talking a lot about zombies on the show. And he put out this strange tweet. And I just, I didn't quite understand where it came from. But it says, if Biden were a flesh-eating zombie, right? And then it says, oh, we'll be plunged into a thousand years of darkness. Why, it's still, I guess, I guess Cuban had said this. But a thousand years of darkness, a thousand years of darkness, a thousand years of darkness is something that I've been talking about on the show. Do you remember a little while ago I did a, let me just show this to you. Let me play this for you. This was a, um, I think I have it right here. Let me make sure that this is up. All right. I believe that I'm transitioned over. Yep. All right. Let's just listen to this. Donald Trump just released a video warning everybody about a thousand years of darkness. Same thing that I talked about exactly 22 months ago, about the thousand years of, of darkness that's to come, the rule of Satan, which I talked about four days ago on a show, and I also talked about yesterday on a show. And that killing stone opening up after a thousand years, releasing what they call the Nine-Tailed Fox Demon, which brings a judgment on the earth devil being released for a little bit of time and now all of a sudden what donald trump's warning everybody about a thousand years of darkness that's sus we'll preserve for our children this the last best hope of man on earth or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness the last step into a thousand years of darkness a thousand years of darkness opening up after a thousand years I find that to be pretty incredible. I find it to be pretty strange. I find it to be something that, um, maybe there's something to it. Because you see this thousand years, it comes out at the same time. Thank you very much for the super chat, Lisa Gordon. It comes out at the same time. Same time this is going down. Same time that the devil comes down to the earth, there's a devil comet. Same time. The witnesses stand and rise in Egypt, Sodom in Egypt. I live up the street from Babylon. Legit. I'm in Long Island, Strong Island. Strange. All of these things coming together, but this is not it. This is where this is where the this is where things get very interesting and amazing. We well past the um, thousand mark. Hit the like button, will you? Hit the like right now. If you haven't done it, just exit out of chat. This is By the end, you're going to see why. People need to watch this show. I, I don't say that that often. I wish people would watch all the time. Hope you're subscribed if you're new. The last time we talked about Jonah, it seems like we've been talking about Jonah every year since that eclipse and before it. Now, what was interesting is as I'm putting this show together, isn't it interesting that we have the eclipse that goes through all of these places in Nineveh? Nineveh, New York, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Iowa, Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Virginia, Nineveh, Pennsylvania, Nineveh, Nova Scotia, Nineveh, Indiana, eight places. It also goes through Jonah, Texas. It also goes through the Ark. It only goes through one place place of Nineveh at a hundred percent but everything else is well within that they're witnessing something fantastic why are people hanging on Nineveh why are people pointing out Nineveh there's other I went through and I saw many other places there was Mason this Mason that a couple of Masons 
I mean, we could do anything, but I feel like this is an, a, a message that's important. I feel like there's a reason why everybody's making a big deal out of this. So I went back and I started looking at all my Jonah shows. I said, oh my goodness, didn't my channel start with me talking as if I was Jonah in reference to a comet in meteors? Didn't my channel just blow up after that? It did. Let me show you, um, let me just show that to you. Because Jonah was the very thing that launched my channel because I didn't want to talk about all the goofy, scary stuff. It's like back, I don't know how long ago it was. It was so long ago. I didn't want to talk about the scary stuff. Here we go. 2016. Take a look at the, uh, the date. Now, this is me in front of, by the way, in front of a, um, a hospital. I had a dream the night before where Ethan was in the hospital and there were dark storm clouds and then it just got really bad with meteors and everything else. Everything got very dark and then it was like just it was out of control. And after months and months of prompting and me knowing that God wanted me to talk about this stuff, I finally said, oh my goodness, I'm bringing Ethan to the hospital. The hospital looks like the hospital that I had in my dream last night. Maybe I should share. And this is what I shared. Oh, and by the way, take a look at how long the video is. It's uh, exactly one minute and 11 seconds in length. I may have done that on purpose. I don't remember. Oh, don't slow me down here. Hopefully we're not going to lose signal. Let me know if you're having any issues, people. Hopefully you can still hear me in the chat and everything else. I'm sure at some place it'll catch up. If not, maybe we'll just go back to it. Maybe we'll just pivot. You know, let's, that's what we'll do. We'll pivot and we'll go back to it. I really don't want this. I really don't want this to be one of those shows where we have the issues. You know what I mean? So let me just go back to this and let me give it a second. We're going to, we're going to, you're going to, we're going to trust in God as we go. Hey, you know what? Speaking of trusting in God, you know, today I did this, but I had it. I had no problem doing it before I started the show and I was really impressed by it. I was really impressed by it. It's like the alarm needs to be sounded. And I feel like this is the alarm that needs to be sounded. The same thing that happened in Jonah's day happened is happening again. There was an eclipse. Jonah in 7, 745 BC, Jonah was a prophet who was called by God to preach to the Assyrians in Nineveh. You know, Nineveh, you know what Nineveh means? It means the place of Ninus, the abode of Ninus. Ninus the, is uh, the child of Baal, the children of of Baal, Ninus. Very strange. So you're hitting Nineveh on this eclipse. We're hitting Egypt on this eclipse. We have the Devil Comet on this eclipse. We have the Cicadas on this eclipse. But there was also an eclipse probably when Jonah was speaking. There's a lot of people talking about how that was like one of the signs that got the king and all of the Ninevites to repent. They declared a fast. We're going to get into that. It's not what you think. They declared a fast in the land. Jonah, this is a story that needs to be heard. This is something that I felt like I really felt was, you know, what, let me just close out of here and let me go over here and let's see if I can play this one. There we go. You're going to have to give me uh you're going to have to give me back. I said now you take a look at this. Here we go. Now this was April 26, 2016. This is before any of these eclipses. Well, if you want me to share something, you have to really, you're gonna have to give me, uh, you're gonna have to give me the heads up. And so, uh, and last night I have um, a terrible dream where I'm at the emergency room, a building much like this, which is really disturbing. And um, we're there for Ethan. And in the dream, <laughs> Basically, like, you know, I, we start seeing meteors flying and, um, man, and it was like almost like uh, it looked like scary times were coming because of this. And um, but but that wasn't really the dream. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. The, the point of the dream was that in the dream, I felt like if I had shared about it, if I had just, you know, warned people, if I had just said, look, this is what I'm thinking about, that maybe perhaps 
I don't know. I know it's as crazy as it sounds, you know. I mean, like um, Jonah, you know, when he when he didn't want to share, he didn't want to say, you know, oh, hey, I'm going to talk about aliens now. I don't even believe in aliens. I'm supposed to tell you about that. So long story short, I had this terrible dream and uh, that Ethan was in the hospital and there I was with Danielle and um, and then this all happened. And um, the whole point of the dream was that I was too scared to basically stand up. Like Jonah. Like Jonah. Like I felt like, I felt like if I just basically started speaking out in faith, Start telling people about the devil comet. Start telling people about the cicadas. Start telling people about this eclipse. Start telling people about how we've been talking about this for a long time and now here we are. But I didn't expect everything to line up the way it did. I didn't expect... Like I had forgotten that it was all about Jonah before my channel took off. So then I started thinking, well, there's probably got to be more. And I started looking, and my goodness wasn't there. I mean, I did like show after show after show. Here's the one, one, one again. Look at this, one year, 10 months ago. If you add the end date, you'll get one year, 10 months in one day. 22 months. Huge prophetic event just happened. All about Jonah. But that's not all. Because I did one after the other, after the other, after the other. Here's another one. Let's just take a... And believe it or not, this is something that's pretty important. And once this one I did not do on purpose. Let me turn the volume on. And a lot of people today don't even right, know. Sorry. Any dream, if you're meant to wake up, that dream will become a nightmare and it will get worse until you do. This is all about waking up. Jesus said, look, there's no sign that's going to be given. You're not going to get anything huge and miraculous. You're going to get one thing, the sign of Jonah. And a lot of people today don't even know what that is. So what is a sign? Well, that, that word sign actually means a distinguishing mark, something that makes you different from others. So, you know, a lot of people, when they think of the sign of Jonah, they think that it has to do with a fish. And uh, that's ironic because, yeah. I mean, in 2017, I said the sign was upon us and it pretty much looks like the sign, the sign is here. The question becomes, the more I looked at this, why was Jonah and this story so pulling? Why did it pull me so? On my birthday, this is very strange. On my birthday, um, June 11th, that is. Anybody who wants to, you know, send me a nice email or something. <laughs> there was a lobster diver in 2021 named Michael Packard. And... Here is yet another show that I did. Behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The resurrection of the dead is happening in 2021. Now, this guy was swallowed by a humpback whale. About 30 seconds, and he lived to tell the tale. Strange. Strange that Jonah is all over my YouTube channel. It can't be denied. The channel took off with this. All of this stuff happening, Nineveh, all the connections, the one year, 11, you know, 10 months, one day, the one, one, everywhere, they're all the connections. Now, you know, the one, 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 what that means in Strong's, it means that which is unlawful, abominable. This is God is going to judge you. 
That's what it is. The 1111 on 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 the uh, the I am a witness shirt, which by the way, all the merch you can get, and it supports the channel. I uh, it's like Aaron lifting up Moses's arms. You could look at it that way. It's like it's good to be helped. We all need a little bit of help. You can hit the links in the description below. The best way to do it though. Just make sure you hit the like button if you like the show. Just leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Take something with it, with you, and um, hopefully share it with the world. I need all of you today to make a conscious effort to say, from this point forward, I'm going to really try to live my best life. I'm going to be the best that I can. I'm going to be the kindest I can. I'm going to forgive people their trespasses. I'm going to love, and I'm going to encourage and I'm not going to do wrong. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. Like you're going to, you're going to try because it's almost like this is the moment when people need to fast from the food of the world, if you will. We're going to get there. At the same time, all this is happening. We have planets lining up that will be visible. It's really just it makes me feel so encouraged to see this. Now, I want to give you a little background on these eclipses, and I want to, we're going to reel back time a little bit, and we're going to, I'm going to put a marking post in, this, in a sign, like the McDonald's sign, right? 226 begins. That means a sign. We're going to put a sign, a marking post, in the sand today so we can go back and we can look and we can see where we've been, and then we can come back and make sure that we are firmly grounded in a foundation and not something that's just going to be blown over. This is going to encourage your faith, is what I'm trying to say. December 14th eclipse, I said, may begin Jacob's time of trouble. Another thing showed up around the eclipse last time, and especially around this date. Right before this December 14th eclipse, which took place in between the two eclipses, there's 1,212 days, one way you look at it, if you go eclipse to eclipse to eclipse to eclipse, but there's 1,211 days in between. And that's really what I was focusing on back then. Back then, it was, you know, it was, it was before the December 14th eclipse by maybe about a month. Revelation 12, 11 through 12, I decided to read them both. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. What's the blood of the lamb? The blood of the lamb is what's put over the doorpost. The life of the body is in the blood. It's a symbol of the life of Christ literally over you. The entrance to you. You're covered with this. It's a mark the Tav, the 22. And they loved their lives not unto death. They loved their lives unto the death. They loved their lives unto the death. What does this mean? It means they understand that this is not all there is. But really, according to Scripture, to be carnally minded is death. To rise from that would be life indeed. Christ is that life. The way to truly live our life. And that's the day we're in. Because you hear the words, you hear the words, they love their lives, and you think it's a terrible thing, but the next line, 12, 12 is, therefore you rejoice, you heavens. Here we go again with the devil comet. And you that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down onto you. How is this possible? How is this possible? 1211, there's 1211. 1212, there's 1212. That's how long the eclipses are in between. At the same time, there's a devil that's coming down onto us. Surprise comets, they say. You're going to find... When I was 12 years old, on my birthday back then, there was one. Strange. Because I started looking into all this. I'm like, I wonder if people actually took the time to consider how valuable they were. You live. God created you. 
And then the world took a hold of you, right? That's why the scriptures say we're crucified with Christ. We lost our true identity, our, the source of God. Adam was once with God, and then he ate of the tree, and he started covering himself with fig leaves, no fruit. Who wants to bet that my fig tree produces fruit this summer for the first time? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that out as a test because I think that God is working. So on December 14th, what happened? First wackadoo. Cyber attacks. Total solar eclipse, southern Chile, Argentina. Now, there was something else that happened around that time. And if you're on social media and you're in this niche world and you like things that are interesting, and you want to look at the, uh, the, the movie that is our life through, through new eyes, you heard about the monolith. I actually put out a video, get this, because we now know that there's another monolith that appeared on a Welsh island in Wales. All of this is connected kind of to the Stone of Destiny in a roundabout way, which, by the way, right now is moving back home, supposedly. We don't even think that's the real one. doesn't really matter. Point is, this other monolith was found there. I put out a, uh, I put out a video when I was away, when I was, uh, we were visiting my mother-in-law, we were in Florida, I was still working. Because it, things are just so important. I felt like this monolith story was important before the monolith appeared. Guess when the monolith appeared in Wales? 22 days later. I put my video out on X and it's gone viral. Right now, I think it has 122,000 views. The monolith is back. The monolith is back. And I'm not going to play that for you. If you want, you can go to X and find it. Or you can actually just go back to my playlist and videos because it's there. It's there. Has a lot to do with zombies and all sorts of weird things. But you'll see that from March 11th, 2024, okay, which is when this monolith was discovered, to... April 8th, you have four weeks exactly. Four is a very important number. It's that 40 years. Four. When you see four, you think of a journey. Because there's four seasons, right? There's four quarters to a dollar. So you see four, you see 40. You understand that this is a time in the wilderness. And we got that time in the wilderness from when that monolith popped up. The other ones popped up. Guess when? Take a wild guess. Take a look at my thumbnails to the uh, lower right-hand corner of the screen, and you will see that I wrote December 14th, Part 2, the great, uh, I don't even want to say it out loud, but the tip tribulation, <laughs> the comet, the eclipse, and another monolith. This is going back, and the date that I had, let me just, let me see what the date is. Let me just blow this up so you can get an idea. It is, when was the date? I think it was November something. Yeah, I think it was like November 28th, 2000. I think it was like two, yeah. It was right, be, it was right before December 14th. So it was in November, um, both of them. And then I did another video, Monolith Signal Christ's Return. And then you see a picture because, you know what a monolith is, is just it's a pillar. Okay, let me just make this big so you can take a look at this thumbnail. Um, it's a pillar. And do you know who erected the very first monolith in Scripture? The very first pillar? Take a wild guess. Anybody say it in the live chat. And by the way, here we go. We've Now we've over 1,500 people watching. That's great. Hit that like button, will you? Share, share, share when the video's over. Make sure you leave me a comment and let me know. It was Jacob. Jacob created a pillar. 2000 BC. Then another monolith appeared, 33 AD. Then another monolith appeared, 2000 AD. Then another monolith appeared, 2020 AD. And now we got another monolith that just appeared some three and a half years later. Why is that interesting? Because... That's Jacob's time of trouble, 
about three and a half years. The short end, it's in the book of Jeremiah. Let me, let me blow this up and we'll read this to you because this is all very significant. I, this is the day we're in. This is the day we're in. Jeremiah 30, 7 through 10. Alas, for that day is so great. And my goodness, I would, I would agree in my life, this day is so great. I would say that there's never been a day like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But as I shared many times before, because I said Jacob's time was coming during the height of all the craziness, I said, it's going to go away. I did. I said, when Trump said, it's just going to go away one day, it'll just disappear. I said, he was telling the truth. MAGA, it's magic. You're going to find that the cicadas, do you know what they call them this year? Magic. Magic cicadas. Everything you're going to find is connected to sorceries. And God. It's very strange. On X, you should follow me there. It's Jacob Israel 71. I put out a video where I was listening to that group tool. I didn't know at the time. I was just at the gym and it just popped up. And I didn't, was it something I normally listen to? Something that I used to listen to because the band's very good. But at the time, I was working on this thing with Moses, where Moses has his serpent. Yet all the sorcerers, right? All the sorcerers could say, hey, look what's coming. Put out a little tweet. Hey, look what's coming. But then Moses came in and he was like, let me show you something. The thing that God gave me and put in my hand, the staff that I have, when I throw it down, it'll become a snake that will eat all of your snakes. A serpent. It's a picture of the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail. Cain and Abel. Get it? It's about eating all the lies of the world. What is, what is the staff that Moses had? It was something that he used to just move his sheep, to try to keep his sheep in line, to help them, to guide them to lead them. It would be the equivalent of me doing the same thing today with my phone. I said this on the last show. So I put out this, this little video on X and the, the video, very cool, was Moses and it was Pharaoh and it was the sorcerers and they were doing battle. And this is the day we're in. He's going to be saved out of it. For it came to pass in that day, says the Lord hopes, host, I will break his yoke what is a yoke? A yoke is something that binds you. A yoke is something that keeps you censored. I'm going to break his yoke. It's going to hold you back. Something that's holding you back from your God-given gift and potential. I'm telling you, my friends, he's breaking your yokes. And I'm not telling a yoke. <laughs> this bad joke, bad joke. He's breaking the yokes. He's breaking the things that have bound us. This is the moment. This is why we need to Declare that fast. I'm not going to do those things that bother me anymore. I'm not going to do those things that ultimately hurt me. I'm not going to do the things just because the other people do it. I'm going to stop showing people hate. I'm going to stop projecting hate. I'm going to stop projecting fear. I'm going to do something that's going to make this world a better place. I'm going to speak life, not death. I'm going to speak blessings, not curses. God's going to save you out of it. And they're going to serve God and David, their king, who God is going to raise up at the end. A lot of people call somebody we know, David. Isn't that interesting? Therefore, fear not, my servant Jacob, says the Lord. And that's just not me, by the way. It's all you. It's a picture. The Israelites are many Jacobs. They're many Israels. It's, that's why I, that last name I was inspired to take. Because it's a picture of us. Thank you for the super chat, G squared. I appreciate that. I'll save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and shall be quiet. And my wife would love that because I talk so much about this stuff. <laughs> and none shall make him afraid. Because he's going to have so much faith and he's going to love the Lord so much and he's going to trust the Lord so much that he's not going to let anybody or anything scare him anymore. Now, let's talk about these cicadas for a second. 
the monoliths appeared. The monoliths appeared, and there was a change to the genetic makeup of the animals that touched the monolith in that movie, Space Odyssey. I said as much back in those shows that I did before that December 14th eclipse, where something came out that they say may have something to do with that. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a speculator, right? But it's interesting timing, don't you think? And now we have the monoliths appearing yet again. Four weeks before this other eclipse. Strange. At the same time, we have these billions of cicadas that are expected to surface. One group, 13 years. One group, 17 years. They're going to emerge simultaneously. Now listen to this. The 13-year group, known as Brood X1X, or the Great Southern Brood, is the largest cicada brood. What's number, what's number 13 again? Isn't that the death card? Weren't we talking about there were going to be the sheep? There are going to be a lot more goats than the sheep. There are going to be a lot more tares than the wheat, especially in the end. Laborers are few. Go figure. The 13-year cycle just happens to be the biggest. Because broad is the gate to destruction and death. Wide. Hell enlarges itself daily. And hell is not what you think. It is a life that is lived here in misery and pain and thoughts that you're somehow, that you're somehow in charge of everything. And you're not. The scriptures say that Christ cannot deny himself. It can be torment and fear. But the 17-year cycle, now get this. Guess where the 17-year cycle is emerging from? The smaller one. That's right, Illinois. That's right. Primarily, that's where, out of all the places, cicadas emerge. That's the place. Right where the eclipses go together. Boom. X. That's some interesting kawinky dinky do, don't you think? In a historic year for cicadas, the news read today, Illinois is the epicenter of it all. Now, before the show, for some reason I said Illinois, and I thought, I bet you there's something about that. <laughs> I bet you there's something about that. You're looking at the words. I don't know. I didn't look into it. But maybe you can leave me a comment. Do you think that Illinois, there's a, a greater meaning? Like, what does Illinois literally mean? Or is it those that are, you know, that are ill? I don't know. I think that it's interesting that it, that's the place. All of these things happening. Now, when was the last time these cicadas and this took place? Does anybody know? It was sort of like the birth of the nation and when the nation was going through and get breaking free from England. Independence, freedom. Cicada swarms, now this is where it gets wild, were documented by a black naturalist in the 18th century, Benjamin Banneker. He was just 17 years old when he first studied the overwhelming broods of cicadas emerging from the ground in 1749. 1749 was the last time the Roanoke colony was founded, right? right? Right around there. The Roanoke colony, where the people just sort of disappeared. <laughs> a lot of people think that this is going to be one of those rapture moments where people are going to poof away. I already told you what the, uh, the rapture is. The word doesn't even exist in Scripture. It has to do with something completely different. The person you used to be in the world is no more. Two are in the field. One is taken, one is left. That word taken means, paralumbano in Greek, it means to, to adhere to a certain set of new beliefs, to see something and be affected by it, like looking at a, a child um, smile and it, it causes you to smile and laugh, being affected by something in a positive way. And the other word, left, it means divorced, cast off. We have to say goodbye to the selfish way we've been living. We have to divorce ourselves from it because we've been married to it for so long. The time is too short. 
because you're going to end up going into one place, captivity, if you've led to captivity, or you're going to go to freedom. One of one, I want to go to freedom. I want to enjoy my life. I want to be filled with joy and peace and hope. Don't you? Now, this is why it's weird. And this is why these cicadas that are blooming, I did a show about this. I did a whole video. If you want, you can watch the video. It was a great breakdown. About how the eclipse looks, turns the sun and it looks like a big, you know, black hole, right? We'll say. Spooky. Must be spooky. If you've never seen one before and you, don't, you have nothing, no history to tell you what it is, must be. M must be back in, when the Assyrians, back in Nineveh, when, when, this ha when it happened, they must have been freaked out. I would have been freaked out. Benjamin Banneker was documenting this. Guess what he thought they were? Guess what they all thought they were? Locusts. They thought it was the biblical plague of locusts. The last time this was here, the cicadas were compared to the locusts that descend out of the bottomless pit in the book of Revelation. The locusts are a symbol of God's judgment of the wicked. They come from the abyss, a place of darkness, supposedly. Bottomless pit, to me, is just a life that's lived without Christ. But consider that there's an eclipse. Consider that the cicadas were once considered to be, let me read it, the first great locust year that I can remember was 1749, wrote Banneker. Decades later, in his astronomical journey, I was about 17 years of age when thousands of them came, creeping up the trees and bushes. I imagined they came to eat and destroy the fruit of the earth and would occasion a famine in the land. I therefore began to kill and destroy them but soon saw my labor was in vain. This is some interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Interesting to think that they thought they were the locusts of the book of Revelation. And here, the locusts of the book of Revelation, they emerge, signs in the heavens, Signs in the earth, the locusts descending, ascending out of the pit, out of the ground. They die on the tree, you know, symbolic of eating of that tree of life or good and evil. Two sets of cicadas. Which one are you? That's why I put the two, let me just pull this up, on the thumbnail. That right there is your sign. Very strange. Very strange how the last time they were here, here's the deal. It was all about the 13 colonies. Do you know how many states, because we've been talking about 13 on the channel quite a bit. We've been talking about the 13 signs. 13. There's 12 disciples and then there's Christ. Are you, you getting what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm throwing down? As I'm standing for the first time, I bet you this video goes viral. It should go viral because people need to turn their life around. The signs are clear if you're looking. Once again, I'm just a speculator. I say it's better to err on the side of being good. <laughs> being good. Putting your faith in more than yourself because I'll tell you what, how's that going for you? I'm so sold off on the idea, so I should say sold to the idea. So I want to be a, we'll say like a slave to Christ, because that burden is easy. I don't want to be a slave to the world. That's a tough burden. Two groups of people. One are going to be ruled by the devil. And woe to them, to the inhabitants of the earth, the carnal realm. How do I know that the earth and heaven are symbols of God's ways and man's ways? Because as the earth is beneath, no, I'm sorry, as the heavens are above the earth, so are God's ways above man's. Woe to those in the earth, but rejoice those in the heavens. Rejoice those. I know it's not easy right now. 
I know things are hard right now. I know things are expensive and scary right now. I know we may lose everything right now. I know we may be thrown into the street right now. I know terrible things could happen right now, but I know it's leading to something good if you're good. This is what Jonah said. Perhaps that terrible dream that I had. You don't think that I'm thinking maybe there's something cataclysmic coming? Who's that magician? What's his name? Who uh, is going to make the moon disappear? I forgot the guy's name. Tell me in the uh, live chat. Uh, you know, he was good buddies with, you know, the, the people that went to the island and everything else. Copperfield. Copperfield. David Copperfield. Right? That's his name. David Copperfield. Copperfield's going to make the uh, the moon disappear. I've been thinking, how's that moon going to disappear, right? Some people say, oh, the, 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 they, they launched some stuff and some of the stuff that David Copperfield had, they put on that and it's now on the moon, supposedly, right? Or something else could be blocking it, maybe at that moment in time. Passing by, if you will. Could it be the Devil Comet? I don't know. That would make the moon disappear, wouldn't it? Be strange. Be quick. Poof. Or maybe it's nothing at all. Copperfield. David Copperfield. I, I, he's not really making the moon disappear, but I'll tell you one thing. You know what the moon is symbolic of? A man's soul. The moon is not the source of light. The moon is simply a reflection of the light. Unless, of course, you believe it's like a night light, which is fine. I mean, I don't know. I've never been to the moon. But symbolically, the moon and the sun, they're... um. Pictures of two different things. Signs are a big thing to me, right? They, they're a big thing in, in the scriptures too because, you know, how do we get from one place to another? How do we find a location? But we, we follow the signs to get there. I've been doing this a long time. I don't know why I've been doing it. Put it in a book, my novel. You should get a copy of the novel. Put it in a novel many, many years ago. The day that we're in and everything. All of it. So that when it happened, when it happened, it would be a proof. It's now a proof. This show is a proof. God is working. So I start thinking, you know, all my children, they have these interesting birthdays. Shiloh's born on 9-11 to the second, two years later of that first tower being hit. And that was a big deal because I really had a lot of revelation on that day. My son Noah almost died, you know, when he was born, and he's like seven years and 11 days from 9-11. Very interesting because his name's Noah, Genesis 7-11. Uh, and my son Ethan, when he was born, there was a, a great earthquake. Shallow was born, there was Mars was closer to the earth than it had been like 60,000 years or something. Just all this stuff that's like really cool around my, um, you know, my children. And I was like, nothing for me when I'm born, nothing. Nothing for me, infinite love. Thank you for the super chat. Nothing. But then I start talking about all this. I start thinking about all of this. And I remember seeing a comet. I remember seeing a comet. I go, I wonder if I was around 12 years old. Now, why is 12 important? Because 12 was, um, that's when Christ enters the temple. 12 was when I gave my life, we'll say, to God. Like, really, that's when I started to really, in faith, kind of step out. 12. So I'm like, let me look up Comet in 12. There was a surprise Comet no one knew of that appeared. But guess when? In April. 40 years. 40 years from the one that we're going to. That Comet, my birthday Comet. You know what else was on that day when I was 12 years old? An eclipse. A total solar eclipse on June 11th, 1983. Guess where that eclipse was? The Christmas Islands. Guess what the uh, name of the comet was? Comet Iris, which means God's wrath. Iraqi Alcott, which means, Iraqi means new wood. Alcott means old cottage. <sighs> new wood for the old cottage. It's like, it's a new day. A new temple's being built 40 years ago. 
A surprise comet? No one saw it coming until April? On my birthday, a solar eclipse? In correlation with this strange, and it was a small comet. Very interesting how all these things just kind of come together. You know, Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. After the 10 plagues, what happens? They're set free. And what do they face? Well, they face the Red Sea, don't they? And um, if you remember correctly, we've been talking about the Red Sea a lot on this show. I actually put tests out about the Red Sea, how that would be like, that's where the, the we would see so much stuff happen. And then boom, there it is. 40 years ago, a comet came out of the blue in a surprise Earth flyby. Guess what? It was the closest comet to pass ever. Since guess when? Since guess when? Yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. And now we have an eclipse 40 years later. I'm 40 years older, 52 from 12. Is Israel or the Israelites finally going to be set free? And what does that look like? What does it mean? Are the lights going to go out like Trump is shouting? You'll probably start seeing it. I just, uh, I just saw it before I came on here. Or are the lights going to shine brighter and brighter and brighter like never before? Michael Packard, on June 11th, on June 11th, on my birthday, swallowed by a humpback whale. Devil Comet. All of these things coming together at the almost the exact same time. It's something you just can't ignore. This isn't something that we can just kind of push off anymore. It's something that needs to be taken seriously. It goes through Nineveh, New York, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Iowa, Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. I played videos Within that perfect time frame, boom, 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 one after the other, Nineveh, Jonah, Jonah, repent, repent, it's time to repent. It's time for me to read that passage for you. Because I was told by a friend, Nicholas on X, who is, is a great guy, he's like, you need to declare a fast. So I went to prayer about it, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm not going to tell people. Because Jonah fasted, the, like the people in, in Nineveh fasted, it wasn't like three days, like Nicholas was asking. 40 days, 40 nights. But what is 40 symbolic of again? That's right. A wilderness journey. 40 days, 40 nights, Jesus was in the wilderness and he fasted. And when you're being fasted, what happens? You're tempted. If you're really the son, if you're really a witness, if you're really the son of God, right? If you're really a child of God, do this. If you're really this, if you're really... I don't care. I'm trusting in God. I know there are a lot of big-time people, big-time powerful people that watch. Because they know there's more than just me and just you. A sincere heart is going to be answered. And that's why I'm asking all of you to be sincere. I'm asking you to do this to Passover which is 22 days after that eclipse. Let me read this to you, okay? Because Passover is Monday, April 22nd, and it ends on the 30th. And for those of you that are Muslim, Ramadan has just started, which happens to be a fast. My neighbor, I saw him yesterday. I was picking up sticks outside from the storm. So many sticks, was, and he looks just so tired. And he's like, he's like, oh, yes, yes. And, you know, they move the clocks back. So it's like you're eating. It takes a lot long because they can't eat till uh, the sun goes down. It's interesting. Interesting. This is Jonah 3. Now, this is after Jonah was swallowed by the great fish and was vomited up on. This was after Jonah was wi being wishy-washy and was worried about it. He was using, you know, like fart guns and doing all sorts of things. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to take the role. 
He didn't want to take the role. He didn't want to do it. God had sent strong, strong wake-up calls. Like that terrible nightmare that I had. Where I said, maybe if I just tell people. Maybe we can avoid the terrible stuff that could be coming. Because we've become so, so very wicked. This world is so, so very lost. I almost would like to declare a fast from uh, everybody like, get, let's get off social media. My God, I wonder how much, how much nicer life would be. But I, you know, I got I to gotta keep sharing and get, <laughs> getting this all through all this stuff. Thank you, Lauren. Sorry. With the one, one, one. Been talking about that, Lauren. Hope you go back to the beginning and watch. Jonah 3. And the word of God came to Jonah the second time. Now, does that ring any bells for anybody? Does that make anybody think to themselves, wow, that's interesting, because here Jacob was just talking about how the first time he did it, he was terrified. He didn't want to do it. Now here he is, and he says, he says exactly what God wants him to say. The word of the Lord came, was revealed unto Jonah the second time, saying, arise, go to Nineveh. That means go to the place where the children of Baal are hanging out. The great city, Babylon the Great, the harlot, Nineveh, Syria, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter, it's just a symbol of the world. And preach to them, preach to them according to the word of the Lord. Preach what I bid you. So Jonah arose and he went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was exceeding great and it was a three days journey. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey and he just enters in and he cries and says, you have 40 days. Nineveh is going to be overthrown. I don't know how many days it is till the eclipse from today. Maybe somebody could do the math. It would be really cool if it was 40 days from Passover or something. But you have 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people in Nineveh believed God. They believed it. And they proclaimed the fast. Jonah came back a second time. He said, look, I want your attention now. I did it the first time. Now I want to be very, very clear. You got like 40 days until everything goes sideways. You think it's been bad now? Declare fast in the land. Cut off all the stuff that's bringing you such misery. Put the things down that are keeping you in bondage. You can do it. Just don't trust on your own strength and lean not on your own understanding. Reach out and ask God to get you through. This is the moment where God's there to get you through. Jonah declares to fast. The people believed Nineveh. The people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast. They put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. The person who was in charge of it all. And he arose from his throne. And he laid his robe from him. And he covered himself with sackcloth. And he sat in ashes. Carbondale. 666. Ashes. Carbondale. How cool is that? And he caused it to be proclaimed and publicized throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles saying. Let neither man nor beast Herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Let them turn every one of them from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. That's the fast. Let them turn from their evil ways. Who cares if you don't eat Oreos? Who cares if you don't drink a glass of water? What goes into the man isn't what's valuable. It's what comes out of the man that matters. That's what matters. I'm going to read that again. Let them turn everyone from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. You have people in this party that say, I don't know about you, in the name of God they say this, I'm done turning the other cheek. Repent. Change your thinking. 
Those that live by the sword, this is the moment you die by the sword. Those that lead to captivity, you're going to trick people? You're going to trap people? You're about to be tripped. You're about to be trapped. You get me? But if you set people free, what is the fast that God asked for? What is the fast? Let's take a look. A day for man to afflict his soul? This is in Isaiah 58. Is this the fast that I've chosen for you? A day where you just don't have some cookies or cake? Is it to bow down your head and spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Is, that, is this the fast that I asked for? God's saying. What are you going to, you're going to, you're going to dress up in literal sackcloth? You're going to walk down the street, parading across, showing everybody how holy you are, how great, what a great person. He walked 10 miles with a cross on his back. Is that what God is asking for? Is not this the fast that I've chosen? But to loose the bands of wickedness. Help people knock off the stuff that's making them terribly miserable. Help the people stop being wicked. Loose them from those bands. Because sin, the wages of sin is death, people. But there's power and hope and life and truth. To undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to deal bread to the hungry? And that thou should bring the poor that are cast out of the house? When you see those that are naked, do you cover them? And that thou hide not thyself from your own flesh? The fast that God wants today, the fast that the king declared, was to stop being wicked. I'm concerned. But I think that if, I don't know, maybe just one of you turns your life around. Could you imagine the life that's going to be waiting for you? In any event, that's the, uh, that's what I needed to get out. That's what I needed to get out. I think that, I think that you can't look at this. I think you can't look at all of this stuff and say, you know, with the receipts, there were receipts. Hopefully you watched the whole show and say that it's just a quinky dinky do. I don't think it's a quinky dinky do. I don't. I think that there's more to it. You got to tell me in the uh, live chat if you think that there's more to it. You got to tell me if you're going to change your ways. Because I certainly, every day, I'm trying harder and harder and harder. Every day. Because I'm not perfect. I'm not the benchmark, right? You just come to Jacob's well, right? You get thirsty again if you leave without Christ. But I'm telling you, Christ sits at this well. This is my main goal. The power and wisdom of God and truth and love. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what's here. So take it with you. Take it with you when you go. Now listen, you know what else? You want to support the channel? There's a couple ways you can do it. I would love it for you all to get a copy of the novel. You go to um, Amazon.com and type in, you know, the calling. It's on sale. I don't know. It's like, I think it's like 18 bucks or something right now. There's like over thousands of reviews, five-star reviews. People love the book. Um, you know, this is really what everything is all about. Find out. Even if you've never read before, just do it. Do it, get it, get it. You'll like it. You'll enjoy the book. It helps me out too, um, because I really want the I want the book to get out, and you'll see why in a couple of years. But there's other ways you can help too, just by liking the the, uh, the show, um, leaving a comment saying wow that was interesting, or you know whatever, sharing it with others, telling people about how cool you know Jacob's channel is, and come on by. Um, if you want to do something that's going to benefit your family and your life, check out who is just on. Good morning, America. Truly free home. Can I be honest with you for a second? Because Stephen is just such a great, he's a great supporter of the channel. He loves us and he's the only sponsor I've ever had. Because, and the reason is because I don't usually, um, I, I don't want people to think that this is, that's why I wait to the end. I don't want people to think that this is all, you know, it's, it's, this, is, this is just something also that's good for you too. Now they, they're doing 50 loads of laundry for free. There's a, um, here, I'll pull, pull it over. Yeah, if you go to uh, Truly Home, 
uh, trulyfreehome.com slash starter kit and you enter code Jacob, you'll get 50 loads. You just free laundry detergent, okay? Um, the link's in the description of the video. You can go there. I'm so proud of S Stephen and the uh, team. He's a, he's a man of God. And, you know, I, be I, believe, that, I believe that we're going to be entering into a new time when there's going to be a whole new way for us to do business. And I think that Stephen may be um, a crucial part of that. He's got something in the works, which is really interesting. Look him up. Once again, the links are in the description below. Get yourself any of the stuff. I, I use it. It's awesome. And um, it helps me. You get a discount or whatever, and you get 50 loads of laundry. And I don't know, like I get five bucks or whatever. I don't know exactly. I didn't read the whole email. But I know that they're very excited about this offer. And I'm very excited that you all came here. And I'm grateful that you did. I love all of you. I'll talk to you soon. I hope this was a great show. Hope I didn't leave anything out. If I did, I'm sure I'll cover it in the next show. Have the best day ever. Talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Don't be wicked anymore.